Hello Good and evening. welcome to another Pro Tips or Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Paddy Murphy. Joining me is Pro Tipster Martin, who's there. Hello. I'm poking Hi, I him. Look. <laughs> Nobody pokes on Facebook anymore, do they? Is that still... Hey, guys, still it was taken away, wasn't it? But I think it's back now. Paddy Murphy has thrown a sheep at you. <laughs> Paddy Murphy has thrown Hillary Clinton, Hillary, Hillary Clinton at you. Paddy Murphy has thrown Barry. Go- anyway, yeah, you get the picture. Martin, how's it going? Are you well? Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's nearly the end of the week, so it's all good when this uh, podcast comes around because you know the weekend's nearly here. Mm, great, isn't it? Um, how, uh, how, how do you stand in international football? Are you a big fan of it or not? No. I mean, I'm... I'm... I'm not looking forward to the next week or so. No, I, I hate it. Especially friendly games. If it was something important, like qualifiers and that, I, I, I'd take a slight interest in it. But friendlies just don't do it for me. I probably won't even eat, even watch the England games against Holland and Italy. Oh, wow. No, oh, it's that bad. I, I think there's a couple of decent ones. There's Germany are playing Spain. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. Argentina, Argentina and Italy. I just want to see what the new Italy team is going to look like. Uh, to be honest, Argentina, yeah. you can't know how they're going to play. Although I was surprised with uh, Argentina. Um, what's the boss's name? Again, he's some Paul, something, whatever his name is. He's left out Paulo de Bala because de Bala has been injured for a while. I think he wants him to be at his best for Russia. Yeah. And he didn't pick, um, what's his name? Mauro uh, Icardi either, even though he's been banging it. As well, uh, he went in a bit of a dip there since Christmas, but he scored four. Was it four last weekend or three? Definitely yeah, had four. Four, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there, uh, there was a debate going on um, that Icardi scored four goals, and a lot of people were saying that oh, it was against a rubbish team. Salah scored four goals, and people were saying, oh, it was against a rubbish team in Watford. And then Ronaldo scores four goals, and everyone goes mental. Ah, best team ever. Best player ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit um, yeah, you know, Ronaldo fans though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. are, they, are they football fans really, or just Ronaldo fans? Which is it? You know, decide. Yeah. You need exactly. to decide one or the other. Um, there was one uh, that I thought was kind of interesting. I was writing about it uh, during the week for the Pro Tipster website. Go to protipster.com slash betting news, and you can see all of the tons of betting nice. previews. That we've been doing. We're putting out about between 40 and 50 a week now. Um, yeah, there was one, uh, Denmark and Panama. This will be of interest to you now. Now, I know Denmark and Panama are very interesting, but uh, uh, hear me out here, Martin. Um, Denmark, uh, as you know, Panama have England in their group. Uh, Panama's first match is against Belgium, which they'll lose. Panama's second match yeah. is against England. Now, here's, 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 here's where the plot thickens. And the third match is against uh, Tunisia, which they'll probably win. So, England also will probably beat Tunisia. England won't probably beat Belgium. So, it's going to gonna come down to England and Panama in, in the group stage. And I know you're smiling there thinking, nah, we'll beat Panama. Oh, yeah, I think, I think uh, the neutral... Uh, uh, you know, I don't think any England fans panicking about that game, to be honest. You okay. watch, it, watch them mark them 4 or 5 nil tonight. Again. Oh, no, no, no. Listen to this, right? All of Panama's matches that they're playing in their uh, pre-World Cup friendlies are all against teams who play this kind of English style of football. So you have uh, Denmark, Northern Ireland, Switzerland, and I don't remember the other one. It was the Sweden. So these people who play the ball a lot in the air. <laughs> You know, so they are going, right, we have to be, England is the right chance, so let's play a lot of teams who play this English style of football. And uh, I don't know, I've been look, looking up like the Asian handicap and stuff like that. The handicap was uh, minus two, I think it's gone down oh, wow. to minus one and a half now, because uh, Panama don't lose, they, they, they're they not very good, but yeah. they don't lose by a lot. You know, they generally only lose by one goal, so... They're really going to go for this England match. I think I'm already looking forward to it. It's not happening <laughs> until next year. Like, if they're getting in four games, these four games against teams who play an English style of football, then, yeah, I think, I think it's really smart. It'd be, it'd be great if, uh, you know, if they can pull off any shocks along the way before the World Cup. But if they end yeah. up losing to Denmark and Switzerland and that 4-5-0, then... You know, oh, yeah, then game over then, you know. They're in trouble, but... No, I might watch that later. It's on at seven o'clock uh, UK time this evening, isn't it? Yes, so. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the Danes, the Danes will just be playing their their strongest eleven as well because they have to get, the, you know. I think I they will, but I think they'll start off with the with the best eleven, and then after sixty minutes, 
be a lot of people dropping out because they just want yeah. to figure out any cracks. Because there's, there's, there's only there's only these three or four matches to go, and then then we have the World Cup. You know, it's not it's not it's not much for a team at all. Even though it's far away for us, it's not in yeah. June. It's far away if you're an international manager. You know, I think a lot of managers will have an idea of the majority of their squad. But yeah, yeah. I reckon a lot of, a lot of teams would have called up some uncapped players. So there's a few people that can squeeze in. I'm not actually sure who Denmark have called up if they've got any uh, debuts on the horizon or not. But no, got... I had a, there, there's, there, I think there's only about two or three t- two or three players in the whole squad who are under ten. Okay. So not yeah. really. Um, uh, on to England are playing Netherlands. Yeah, in in the Netherlands in Amsterdam. Um, what do you think of Ronald Koeman getting the job? I honestly think he'll do a lot better than <laughs> than his predecessors. Um, as manager of Holland, I'm yet to be convinced that Holland are going to suddenly turn into these world beaters again. Um, you know, they've got they've got an OK side, but they just don't seem to be like individuals that they're, they're pretty decent, but they just don't seem to be gelling as a team. And I, I, I hope, you know, for, you know, for international sake that Holland get back to being a world world force. Yeah. But they have you know, got looking, I was looking at this one as well for uh I was writing about <laughs> I wrote the wrong article. I wrote about Portugal versus Netherlands, which has happened on Monday. <laughs> but um, their front three will probably be Memphis Depay, mm-hmm. uh, Bas Dost, who's playing brilliantly in for Sporting in, yeah. in Portugal. I think he has 23 goals and 24 appearances this season. Okay, it's the Portuguese league, but still, if you're scoring that many goals, that's still pretty oh, good. Yeah. And... Um, uh, and uh, what's his name? Not Patrick Clivert, his son, Justin oh, yeah. is probably going to get his the nod as well. So I mean that that's a pretty decent front three if they go with the with the Dutch four three three, you know. Yeah, I, it is. I mean it's, it'll be his debut, I think. I think obviously like they're playing England first. Will Clivert play against England? I don't know. He might get a, he won't start, I don't think, but he might get a run out. Um I think Clivert's got a big future ahead of him, but oh, definitely, yeah. he's, he's still raw, still young. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, with England's goalkeeping problems and defensive problems, I can certainly see Dost and and the pie causing them problems. Yeah, that's not. I was watching the, the the debate, which is hard for Irish people to say. The debate um, on <laughs> sports uh, the other night, and they were talking about this. Uh, this goalkeeper thing is a big thing for you, isn't it? I, I mean, if, if 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 I was picking a team, I personally would pick Nick Pope. And I know he hasn't played for England yet, but you've just got to look at his performances in the Premier League. They've been unbelievable. And, you know, I think he'll be up to the task. I mean, you've got Butland, who makes the odd error here and there. I'd probably say he might be the one. Oh, Dan's just said hello. Hello, Dan. Dan Dan's gone to Bielsko Biela to watch the England under 20s. 20s, yeah. yeah. So uh, have a nice time, Dan. Kicks um, off in 10 minutes, I think, actually. Go on, Dan. Go on, Dan. <laughs> Streak for us, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Thanks, Sam, thanks, Sam. Oh yeah. <laughs> but no, um, what was, what was I saying? Yeah, the Holland, <laughs> Holland, England game. The the goalkeeping situation. I'd pick Nick Pope. Butland's probably gonna get the nod. I'd say Joe Hart for me shouldn't go. I mean, being a West Ham fan, he's been awful for us this season. So. Jordan Pickford, uh, he's, uh, I mean, there's rumours, that there's, there's reports that he's impressed in training, whether that's enough. And uh, Joe Hart's actually laid a bit of a guilt trip on Gareth Southgate because Joe Hart's come out and said um, that, he re- that he sees Gareth Southgate as a loyal person. Uh, so kind of insisting that lo- he'll get picked based on loyalty. Uh, so, uh, there's no loyalty in football. No, there isn't. Um, oh, here's another one. Hello from South Wales. Hello. Oh, well, wow. South Wales, Cardiff, Swansea, <laughs> Newport. Swansea and Cardiff, are, are they south? Yeah, wait, wait, down south. The Swansea, Cardiff and uh, Newport <laughs> all down the south, aren't they? Um, oh, that took the question out of my head now. I was going to say, yeah, but the, look, man, Martin, this, is, this, is a, this has been a problem with England since for years. They, they bring too many names and not enough foreign players. You know? yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, I don't, I mean, I I couldn't care less about England, to be honest. Unless we got to a World Cup final, then I'd, I'd turn into a, one of these plastic fans that just <laughs> for England in the final. But uh, he's from Newport. I wonder if he's a Newport County fan. We'll find out, I'm sure. Yeah. Tell us uh, um, what else is of interest. Yeah, uh, Argentina and Italy. Um, 
you were going to go to that until you heard it was in Manchester. Yeah, because you said, oh, it's in England. I was like, oh, if it's in London, I might give it a go. But yeah, Manchester's a bit far for me. But yeah, that'd be a good game. Um, Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. I think there is a game in um, in London this weekend. I think it's, I can't remember what game it is, but they're playing at Barnet. They're playing at the Hive. Oh, um, well. The, whoever play, right. playing has escaped me. That's um, a big one. Ireland had a group of friendlies against Oman, and they were all played in, in Fulham's Cramer Cottage for oh, well. God knows what reason. There was about four or five Oman friendlies there over a period of about 10 years or something. It was yeah. a star. All played in London. Pff, no idea. <laughs> I can only presume there were a lot of brown envelopes <laughs> being exchanged, you know. Um, Poland, Nigeria, how do you see that one going? That's an interesting one. Um, again, I'll, I'll, with all these friends, I'll wait till the line up. But I'm interested to see what, well, A, Nigeria's kit, because I think they've probably got the best away yeah. kit um, of the whole World Cup. Uh, Poland, Lewandowski, you know what you're getting with him. He'll probably score at least one. Um, Poland, as a side, don't have... Bar Lewandowski don't have unbelievable individuals, but they just, it's like Leicester winning the Premier League. They just have a good collective team. Um, so I think they'll do all right in the World Cup and potentially against Nigeria. They're odds on uh, against Nigeria, which I think is yeah, yeah. fair price. Didn't Nigeria, didn't Nigeria beat Argentina not, that, not, not too long ago? Yeah, I think they were 2 0 down as well. They smashed them 4 2 in the end. Uh, I'm surprised at the odds of that, but. Poland, yeah, sure. Look, I know a bit about Poland living here. Poland, uh, they always, oh, what's the saying in Poland? They say the, ah, oh, they, because there's always three group matches and they have a saying in Poland. I don't remember something like the first one is for, is for defeat. The second one is for something. And the third one is for honor, which, which kind of is their way of saying that, well, we lose the first matches and we're always, we always go down in a blaze of glory in the third match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Every the optimists are, 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 are the, are the Poles, you know. Um, uh, the, the only other one that obviously Germany, Spain would be good because two quality teams. The only other one that for me that sticks out is uh, Ronaldo versus Salah. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Both of them play because um, they're banging in goals at the minute. So both teams to score is a given on that one, I think. Yeah, I think um, so. That's a good one. Ireland are playing Turkey away in Turkey. and uh, Yeah, I remember you speaking about that in midweek saying that an Irish manager used to manage Turkey. Yeah, that's mad. Uh, what was his name? Connolly, I think. James Connolly or Dave Connolly, something like that. Yeah, he was he was from he was from Mayo, and he had been a footballer, professional footballer in in England with yeah. Black and a couple of other players. And yeah, then he was offered a gig uh, to be manager in, for Fenerbahce. Went over to Fenerbahce, and they said, "Right, you're really good at this. Do you want to uh, do you want to manage our national team as well?" And he said, "Yeah, all right." And then World War Two started, and he uh, <laughs> came home. Yeah, mad, wow. <laughs> mad story, isn't it? That is random. But anyway, yeah, look, they're playing, they're playing Turkey, and it's, 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 I, I think it's a fairly interesting game, even though it probably won't be very good, but it, it's, it's interesting from a Turkish and, and an Irish point of view because the Turks have a new, a new manager. He used to be, um, he was Besiktas manager when they won the championship, when they had that, uh, had a great season, they only lost once. Uh, he won it, and then he went off to Shakhtar for like eight or ten years or something, and he's their new manager. He's been brought in because they want to play nice, attractive football. They've, they, Decent amount of, of um, new young players in the team. Yeah. Cenk is uh, under for from Roma is probably the best, and then Cenk Tossin from um, Everton people will know as well. And then Ireland have uh, Ireland have a whole new crop of Championship players <laughs> coming through. So uh, Shawnee McGuire, Scott Hogan, yeah, uh, Aston Villa and Preston North End. They have uh, Matt Doherty from uh, Wolves. I, I really like him, and he's a good player. And then your your lad from West Ham. Rice, I was waiting for you to mention him. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be f- definitely four or five uh, new faces in the Irish team as well. I think it's going to be interesting because they, they're all going to want to cement their places, you know, and they're all... It's a weird one because for many years, Irish fans were pretty depressed about... You just couldn't see anyone coming through the ranks. And now mm-hmm. suddenly there's, there's about 10 lads in the squad that not a lot of people know. So it's good. It's good that there's unknowns there. And that's, that's kind of exciting. We'll, we'll get to see some new players over the next couple of weeks, which, which is great, you know. Good luck. It'd be good to see Ireland in another major finals, but whether that happens in the next few years, I don't know. When's the next one? 2020, but that's all over. This is the Euros, that's all over Europe, isn't it? They're having yeah. a game. So, please, 
God, they'll, they'll qualify for that anyway. <laughs> um, I know there's lower league stuff as well. Do you have any, any tips for the weekend? Uh, I've got a couple, actually. Um, one for Saturday and one for Sunday. I've jotted down a couple of things here. Um, Peterborough, for me, to beat Bristol Rovers at home at 2.10. That will be my Saturday tip. Now, Peterborough, you know, sometimes up and down, but they're, they're on a good run at the minute. Um, back in the playoff places, Actually, they're not. They were in the playoff places. And then Plymouth won to leapfrog them. So they're just outside the playoff places. But player Bristol Rovers side, who they've beaten six times and drawn once in the last seven meetings. Um, Peter have lost one of the last eight, which is a pretty good run. Uh, one, one, two, drawn two of the last four at home. Uh, so, you know, their, their form at London Road is pretty good. Uh, Bristol Rovers lost two of the last three away. And the last three away games, uh, last three, last seven away games, Against top half teams, reads 1 0, draw 1, loss 6. So for me, there is value in Peterborough at 2.10. Um, nice. And on Sunday, I've gone for a game in League 2 in England, and it's Notts County to beat Chesterfield. Um, they're away to Chesterfield, who are 23rd at the minute, uh, not doing very well. Um, won one of the last seven, and currently six points adrift. Um, in the relegation zone in League Two, so they've got a game in hand, but they they need to start winning games, otherwise they're getting relegated. Um, with Barnet, because Barnet are pretty much already down. Um, two clean sheets in the last twenty games as well, so you can expect Notts County to score at least one against them. Um, Notts County are fourth at the minute and go third if results go their way at the weekend. Uh, so they'll be back into the automatic places if they can get a win. And uh, George Grant, for me, top scorer for Notts County with 18 goals this season. Um, and if he personally, if he's on form, they'll, they'll win. Um, that seems to be the case this season. And in January, he was kind of... Uh, he's on loan from Nottingham Forest. And in January, it was, it was rumoured that he was potentially going to get recalled by Forest and then sold to Bradford or Oxford. Um, but that didn't happen. And they said, uh, said to Notts County, look, you can have him for the end of the season. And I think he's been a massive part of where they are this season. And... Uh, yeah, if he if he plays well, which I think he will, then then Notts County will win, and the price for them is two point one two. So again, odds against, and I think very very decent value. Nice, very good. Uh, I don't have anything other than uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good program with Serie B matches if you're into that kind of thing. This weekend, <laughs> Pescara playing Empoli, I think that's going to be a good match. Parma are playing Foggia, that's going to be a good one. And then on Saturday as well, there's a, a Segunda. Segunda division match between uh, Sporting Hee and uh, <laughs> Rio Vallecano, and that looks like it's going to be good because they're both uh, up in the in the promotion places. They're scoring a lot of goals, and mm. uh, yeah, I'd say that there'd be goals in that match for sure. So not a tip, but have a look at um, protipster.com forward slash betting news, where you'll find all of our uh, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of uh, previews of betting articles full of stats. All kinds of amazing stuff. Yeah, we must Adam, have back on those. Uh, Adam nearly beat Spurs. First leg ever. He is a Newport Amber, County fan. Newport fan, yeah. Bale and Bucks. Good man, Adam. Thanks for, thanks for your comments, Adam and Sam and Dan. Enjoy the match if you're still. Uh, you won't be listening now because it's a, it'll have kicked off. Yeah, um, three minutes. He's probably getting a beer now or something, isn't he? <laughs> Good man. Um, and there's, there's nothing else for the weekend. Is there any other sporting um, events happening? Uh, not, not really. I just want to say he, this guy's a Newport fan. I reckon they'll beat Crew. They're odds against. Um, I reckon they'll beat Crew this weekend. But ice hockey wise, tonight, um, late tonight, about midnight UK time, I've written down a couple of stats. I'll, as you know, or may I may not know, I've turned into a bit of a Maple Leafs fan. Um, and they're playing the Nashville Predators tonight, who are, yeah, they're pretty good. Predators are on an unbelievable run of form. Um, 14 and 1 in the last 15 games, which is ridiculous. Um, and 6 and 1 against the spread as well. And the spread um, for this is 6 at a minute, but on Pro Tipster, it's 5.5 uh, is the total points. Um, so for me, I think it's going to be under 5.5 at 2.04. Um, four of the last five Predator games um, would have hit unders. Um, which for me um, bodes well ahead of this one. I can't. I, I see the Predators winning, but I can't. I can't personally see the uh, being more six or more goals. I reckon there'll be four or five. Um, they're averaging five goals 
in the last five meetings between these two sides. So that would be my tip at 2.04 for unders. Really great. Well, Martin, thanks, for that. thanks for that. NHL and football tips. And uh, yeah, we'll be back on Monday, everyone. Make sure and check out protips.com for the best free sports tips on the, on the internet. And as well, protips.com forward slash betting news for all of our betting tips, yes. articles and stats and things like that. Martin, thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back on Monday then with uh, Pro Tips for Dan. And uh, yeah, have a nice weekend and enjoy whatever sports you're watching. And uh, yeah, win a few, Bob. Good luck. Take it easy, guys. See you later. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.